Oh! Oh! Alright. Let's get right into it. Welcome back to the Pride of Villa, everyone. Today is a historical. Oh, whatever. Oh. I'm keeping that first bit because you can actually hear my neck snap. <laughs> we go. That right. just be a bit. We're gonna go. We're gonna start over again. Welcome back to the Pride Villa, everyone. Um, obviously, from the recent news of Dean Smith being sacked, um, comes a new manager, and it looks like it's gonna be Stephen Gerrard. Stevie G. Um, you know, we were originally gonna do a video like saying who we would want, and we're gonna still say who we would have wanted. But I think Stephen Gerrard is someone that we both are right having. You know what I mean? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll discuss how we feel about it rather yeah. than give it away. Um, but yeah, basically the impact of this video is to just, well basically get Nathan's gist of it because we haven't actually heard what he thinks of it. Uh, the impact he's actually had on the club, Dean Smith, and then obviously looking on to what Steven Gerrard is potentially going to be bringing to Aston Villa. So if you all enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, let's get that notification. But let's go to 500 subscribers, yeah. half away to 1,000. We're passing marks that we didn't think was possible. Yeah, you can do it there, you can follow us on social page, that's what we do. Let's get started. So, as it has been reported as of, I believe, Sunday, was it Sunday? Yeah, Sunday morning. Um, Dean Smith has been relieved of his duties as Aston Villa head coach, I believe. Um, it was also, well, it was reported, uh, Craig Shakespeare's also been released from Villa. Yeah. Uh, so, he'll probably be following Dean Smith wherever he goes to next. Um, obviously, I've done a video explaining what I feel about it, but I think really we need to get your gist of things because I know you're probably in the same. You were probably in the same boat about it. I've seen the Holy Trinity's had to redo two of his videos, and from the way he's been telling me, he's pretty much condemned everything that's happened. A lot of people have been, I think, on the same page and said that it's so, as a person, it sucks to have seen him go, but ultimately it's a result of business and just wasn't delivering for us. Um, although he could have argued that he should have had the Brighton game. Um, however you want to go about it. So, Nate, for now, do you, now, what is your overriding feeling about what has happened? Well, I'm going to say uh, something I haven't really seen online from any Villa fans. Um, oh, yeah, I, I um, support everything our owners have done for us in however long they've been with us, obviously, getting... Giving us all the money with our, I mean, obviously Dean Smith's had like what three hundred million uh, to pay for all the players and all that. But I think the one thing I've I've not been able to agree with is obviously sacking Dean Smith at this time. I mean, yeah, say like we went this month without getting a win. Obviously, we've got Brighton, Crystal Palace. I know it's Man City as well, which you know you, you don't really hope for anything. We hope for it, but you know you're not gonna because they're that big of a club and uh you know they have Jack Grealish now but yeah it's just this is the first thing where I can actually say I don't agree with the owners for sacking him this early I mean you know obviously in his last interview he was talking about the point of having injuries and yes that that it can be used as an excuse but it, it's a genuine thing that's going on I mean we, we were missing the likes of Morgan Sanson who obviously had Covid uh some of our youth players weren't able to play um, Douglas Suiz, I think, had COVID as well. And uh, Dan Ying's obviously missing out, Southampton game. So, you know, there's was, was about five players who were missing out. So, you've got, you've got to give him that, at least. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I was gutted. When I, when I finally heard about it, I was like, that can't be right. I had to go online. And obviously, asked him to put it online. And it was just, it was horrible. Because everything that Dane's achieved for us, I mean, the man came in and turn everything around i mean we're we're basically cemented in this league right now and when he came in we were like what 14th in the championship i mean that season i, I know me and you didn't think we we're gonna come up no but you know we did it and i liked what he said in his last you know what he, what he said interview. yeah in his last interview um saying that he kept he, he came in with the ambition to make aston villa uh, a better club where you know better place than he left it and now yeah he's actually done that's a fair play to him but you know now he's gone I mean at the time I was just like I don't really I don't want anyone else to set from him but you know you have to have options and uh, you know the likes of Ralph Hayes and Hootel was being like announced as 
on the short list or something. And I was just thought, like, no, I think we can go for better. You know, obviously Steven Gerrard was one of the main priorities and obviously it looks like we got him now. Um, but I was saying, like, you just said to me, like, why can't we go for someone like Tan Hag? Like, you know, if Tottenham can have contact, why can't we have him? I mean, we're just as big as a club. I mean, I know a lot of other fans from other clubs wouldn't agree with it. We just are, so you just have to get used to it. But, you know, it looks like we've got Steven Gerrard, and to be fair, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I mean, people thought that he wouldn't leave Rangers, obviously, because, you know, he's winning the league with them. He's just won the league, and obviously this, this season he's going to win the league again. It looks like, anyway. But, you know, if there's a Premier League job going as manager, you're going to take it, and, you know, you've got a really good opportunity with Aston Villa. Uh, a really good squad. I mean, I know we're 16th now, but we, we're still basically early in the table, well, early in the season. You know, it's it's not even January yet, so we can definitely turn it all around. And hopefully we can get a top 10 finish. But yeah, what do you want to say about this? Well, we'll touch on to Gerard in a moment. Um, I think I reflected back on it, and I think maybe I was a bit harsh in saying you should go after the Southampton game. Maybe I wasn't. Um, I think overall, I'm more on the side of it should have gone just because of how we've been. It's been 10 games. I even said that last season, you know, at the one point, you give him 10 games this season to see where we are. And he's gone after 11. Um, so it's my fault. I'm the jinx. Um, my issue is some of those... I understand the injury came to the start of the season. I don't understand it now because really, who's going to come into that first team and make the impact? I know Cons is out because of the match ban. But let's say he'd be in there regardless. Um, Louise, I agree, would also be in there. Um, but who else then? Where does Ings play? Because that means you'd have to change the formation completely and drop somebody like a Bailey or Buendia. Sanson, we haven't seen him play really this season. Nah. Um, so that's not really much of it there. And then who else is injured? Trezeguet? Well, he looks like he's about I know, to. I know he's about to, but is he really enough of a apply to warrant him being missed from the team. Well you, you got you got a great like he was Yeah I know I know I know, you know he right? scores goals. I know he can do it. The issue is he does it at the end of the season and doesn't do it enough. And then also as a player he's just not good enough. Triore, now I do think Triore had actually quite a decent season last year because he was the yeah. first year back in England. And I think it's not everyone, it's not gonna be everyone's favourite player but considering his stats he's done alright. Um I don't. I don't, I just. I just can't really agree with the injuries. I think performances. It's been poor. Uh, play. I think really falls heavily on the players just not performing. I mean, Matt Target for me is one of the most standout ones from that um, statement because just how poor he's been this season compared yeah. to what it was like last year. Um, it's just a mess, and I think really he's tried too much things now. Danny Ings was a panic buy. Can you think? Well, considering we've been linked for a midfielder like a Smith Rowe or a, a War Prowse, why would you then turn to sign Danny Ings when we didn't really need a, thir a first team striker? I know everyone doesn't like Wesley, but we still have him. We still have Davis. There's Brad Young. There's. Um, uh, Louis Barry. Louis Barry. Wesley, obviously. Um, Keenan Davis. Keenan Davis. Yeah, that was the name I was trying for. Um, and then even there you could play Bailey down the centre if you really wanted to push it yeah. um, but he didn't sign that midfielder that we needed and it showed he should have signed one he doesn't trust his youngsters I know Jacob Ramsey's had a really good um, rise compared to last season but it's not there now um, so in that sense it's one of those things I can understand why they've done it I said it with the owners as well. They've done it with the Milwaukee Bucks before when they don't perform. And considering the ambition they wanted from this season, it's understandable that if there is better out there, why wait? Why let it go to waste when you can make the impact now? Because it's still, I agree, it's still early in the season. Um, there's still a lot of time. It's been like 10, 11 games. Yeah. I think we're only like four or something points away from six. Well, that's what so it's like, not massively If Arsenal cool. can go off like five losses off the bounce, people saying, oh, they can get top four now. Why can't we go for Europe still? You know what I mean? Yeah. But 
as a person and what he's done for the club, that's what hurts the most about yeah. it because it's, you know, it, it sucks more when your manager's a fan of your team because you know it's going to hurt a lot more on their on their legacy. But considering what he's done and how genuinely of a gentleman he comes across, it's absolutely heartbreaking yeah. from that standpoint. Um, and then, as I said, the moments he's created, obviously, sitting 15th place in the championship, not looking like we have a chance at all of coming up. Um, and he defies the odds, overachieves, 10-game winning run, gets his promoted in the same season. Um, remarkable. He's turned uh, an academy player into the first British player to be sold for over £100 million in Jack Reach. Whatever you feel about him or not, you can't deny what he's done for the talent like him. Um, kept us in the Premier League. Obviously, had a really good start last season, 7-2 against Liverpool, 1-0 against Manchester United this season at Old Trafford. There's a lot of things that he's done for the club. He's given us back our image. And he's said, and I agree, and it's what you said there, he came into the club with the idea of changing it and leaving it better than what it was. And he's absolutely done that. He's lived a dream. Um, and for that, I, I commemorate him for that. And really, Ski, if all Did else fails, <laughs> if all else fails, I would have loved him to have stayed yeah. much longer. But as it's a results business and you've got to move forward. And moving forward, obviously, Villa confirmed the departure of him. It's been a very interesting week. I know a lot of people were scared. I, I, can't, uh, I, I think everyone's lying when they say there is not that sense of excitement. We've had obviously some interesting names linked. I think some of the more obvious ones. Um, but as of recording, it almost looks to be certain. Yeah. We've had reports saying that they have ex uh, they want to excel the recruitment of a new manager by the next 24 to 48 hours. Our odds have dropped here and there. But there is one name that has constantly had the front running. It's been changing from his odds being frozen or suspended, a lot of internal talks that is going to happen, to now what, from what we have seen as a recording again, it's been spotted in London. Yeah. Um, and apparently, according to the likes of Ashley Preesh, Pre, sorry, um, it's all but done. It's just a case of yeah, when it's right. going to happen. Stephen Gerrard to Aston Villa. Now, before I ask you what you think of this, I'm going to give it on my thoughts. Obviously, Stephen Gerrard, very inexperienced in managerial career. Obviously, he's been to Rangers. However, let's not take that away from it because what has he done for Rangers? This was a team that was in administration nearly 10, 11 years ago. Look what he's done the past two seasons. He's won them the league. He's got them back into completely dominate in Scottish Premier League yeah. Europa League he had a really good time there obviously going invincible last season when he did win the league so they're not the only team to do it um, it's that idea of there is a lot of excitement there I see this as more like an Arsenal move where they've gone for Arteta in the sense that it's not somebody that's probably experienced but it's somebody that um, you know they believe in his philosophy of football they believe in what He's been coached and seen, and obviously as a player, it's that like experience behind him to see what he's going to do on the pitch. Um, but then at the same time, it's a big, big gamble. Now I know, yeah. everyone, again, I think I agree with what Ho Trees he said. If this doesn't work, Perzo's got to be looked at massively. The owners got to be looked at because this is all their decision. Essentially, they are confident on who is coming in they are confident that Gerald can do the job um, and I'm a little bit worried just because I think this is a job that needs experience it's a job that needs somebody like what Dean did really developing youth over um, over anything else and it's somebody that needs to essentially hit the ground running seeing the fixtures we have and the position we're in um, he's got to hit the ground running and Gerald is going to be that guy and overall, I am excited. I'm in very, very interested to see what it's going to be like. Obviously, it's not somebody that's a fan of the club. It's somebody that is in Liverpool. So you've got to think, what's he going to be like there? Yeah. But overall, I'm excited to see what he brings. Obviously, his backroom staff's highly praised. Gary McAllister, he's been at, um, he has good connections with Gerard Julio when he was here for a brief time. And he's been very highly talked about. 
Uh, we've obviously got Beal as well coming in. Two great backroom staff there. If we can keep a hold of Neil Cutler as well to make sure that Buendia, no, Buendia, uh, Martinez stays on. I know this saying because I got something like that. Uh, Martinez stays on the same track. Obviously, McAfee's got to improve. Um, and uh, oh, Danks. Danks. He's got to do something. Yeah. It? Um, but overall, I'm excited. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't think you can't be excited. Really, it's a new manager. Yeah. It's like a transfer window. It's like a new shirts coming out. There is always something exciting there. So Nathan, what do you, what, what, do you, what are you going to make for this then? Well, because obviously I'm, I'm sad about Dean, but it's hard not to be excited. I mean, this is potentially the biggest thing that the that the owners are going to do. If you know what I mean. Appointing a new manager because obviously when they came in, got Dean and all that. Well, they came in when we started Steve Bruce. But they did act in fairness to them when they should have acted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Gerald. 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 Um, I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I am excited. Um, I'll never forget what Dean's done for us. Uh, I think the Brighton game coming up is going to be a huge game because I do believe we can get a victory. Um, I think, you know, Gerrard, he's he's up, you know he's forty one. He's been at Rangers, so he's he's not got as much experience as you'd want, if you know what I mean. But then again, he's got the mentality. He's someone that our players can look up to because everyone knows what a great player he was for Liverpool. Um, you know, as they looked at John Terry, because obviously he's probably one of the best defenders in the world when he was playing, if you know what I mean. And, um, yeah, I'm a, it's, it's sad because, you know, we've, we've known, we've had Dean for like three years and we know his sort of style of playing and obviously we've got to change all the beginning. But I I think, and I've, I've said this online, is it is it really, is it unfair or is there too much pressure to say whoever comes in has to give us a top 10 finish? I don't think I don't think that's you know what I mean. I don't think that's a bad thing to say. Like we're bringing someone in who's meant to be an upgrade on Dean, and right now I'm thinking he's not too much of an upgrade. But if he can get us that top ten, maybe he is. But you know, do you agree with what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I agree. I think I've seen on Twitter when people have said I'm not really excited for Gerard because everyone has their own opinions. I agree with what someone else said. If you're not going to get behind the guy at least got, just don't be a fan you've got to get I agree with that you've got to get behind him so much it's like not going to be I would have personally liked to see Favre or even a Sean Dyche or somebody like that I agree with you Ten Hag would have been like the echelons of what we could have had but I don't think realistically it was going to happen um, but yeah Gerard attacking football he's got the leadership qualities of obviously being at Liverpool so he's got something to look up to he will demand um, success. He's got the backroom staff to do it. It's now really up to the players. Are they going to perform for him? Are they going to match the ambition that we want to achieve? And really now, it's a case of where do we want to finish? Now, obviously, we admittedly got ahead of ourselves. Like any other fan would, I think fair enough, yeah, we hold our hands up. Well, probably I, no, yeah, no, we have. We've over... Yeah, but you've got to think about it. The last, whatever... You know, we spent like two hundred million. Should we not think? Oh, we could probably get top six. Yeah, I, I don't agree, think I, that's I, wrong. I agree. I agree. We could have went for it. I was still a bit more like, oh, we're going to finish eight. But I think overall, we really, like, as a fan base, we've all massively overshot ourselves. Um, I'll still say seven for us. For me, six. realistically, if he can get, well, he's going to be a new man. He's going to be his first season in the Prem. He's not going to have a pre-season or a transfer window. Admittedly, what's, we'll week. what's great about actually having brought him in now because it is the international break. You can work with the players that are still here and already start to implement the foundations yeah. for Brighton next week. So we can at least see, you know, he's not going into it blind. He's going to know at least what he can work with. Um, I would take, I know it's going to suck because it'll be the same as last season to finish. I would take 11th. I'd, I'd like to take top 10. I can't see it. Honestly, I cannot see it. As long as, he, I, I know it's very, as long as he stays up, I don't, have, I don't have a care where he finishes. As long as we stay up. But realistically, for a new manager, he's not really... I can't imagine he's going to get a lot to spend in January. But if he can see what we can't, and if he can make an impact, um, I'd like top 10. 
I'd buy tenth at minimum this season. No, eleventh at minimum this I don't season. Think that's, I don't think that's solid too much pressure to say for the new manager because. Well, you mean he's you know he's I mean? gonna have time. Again, it's first season. Yeah. He's not very experienced. He's not going to have the preseason or the Jan uh, summer transfer window. He's only going to get a month in January, and that's if he's even still here. Because let's not forget, I know Nuno got sacked after fourteen games. So there's always, always possibility. And we were never going to take him. Let me just say, I was just never ever wanting Nuno. I'm but it's, it is as simple it. as players have got to get behind him. We as a fan base need to get behind him. We're going to do it. I'll get behind Gerard. Um, I'll get behind Gerard. As I said, it's exciting. You cannot deny the level of his excitement. He's there because we're so curious and intrigued to see what he's going to bring to Aston Villa. Yeah. Um, but it is also a massive risk. So, so this can go one of two ways. It even massively shows the owners have made a great decision or it shows that Perzo and the owners have got a big, big problem there. Um, anything else to say, really? It's just I want to end the video off saying this, and I know this could like start some. Uh, Don't say if you might regret. I'm not. No, it's not nothing like that. It's just obviously it's been speculated he wants the Liverpool job, right? So yes. it's something, right? If he can get this right, so I'd say because obviously Jurgen Klopp's not going to be there forever. Well, he, well, his contract expires in twenty twenty four. We've already discussed this off camera. Yeah. Um, his contract expires in twenty twenty four. I think there is very much what everyone is saying is that by that time, no matter what he is doing, Gerald will go to Liverpool. Because I mean, as a captain, why would yeah, he have you? that? But at the same, yeah, at the same I mean? time, he's got to have the background. I think this is what this is really much more of a stepping stone for him. He can't, um, yeah, but he can't just he can't um, expect to have the job. Say if he's with us, what two, three seasons, and he's only got us to like at, at best, like. Like tenth or ninth, he's got he's got to at least get us into Europe. You know what I mean? Mm. To get that job because it's a it's a massive job, Liverpool. Yeah, like it's it's huge. So you know you got you got to have that background. You know what I mean? But obviously, I don't think just having Rangers behind you is big enough to warrant be able to get that Liverpool job. So he's got he's got to, you know improve us at Villa. I'd say you know. This season, yeah, you're given the benefit of the doubt. Say it is eleven, what you said, but I, I do believe top ten. It's it's def obviously it's, it's still there, but you know I'm I, I'm giving a Europe a miss. I'm, yeah, it's I think you know we're not going to get Europe this no, season. No, it's, it's not. Um, yeah, I agree with you. It's going to be a certain stone for him. He will go for Liverpool eventually. Well, I don't like I, saying that though. You know, I know I'm saying it, but, but you know, know, we, we, know, we, we, we all we all we all know we all know it's going to happen. Um, and yeah, it's as simple as Steven Gerrard is Aston Villa manager. He's got to get this right first before he thinks about going there. Yeah. So it will it will be a very interesting 12 months indeed. But that is going to wrap up this video. So tell us in the comments down below or in the social pages what you think of Gerrard. Do you think his style of football is going to match Aston Villa? Do you think he's going to be a success at Aston Villa? Or do you think he could potentially be gone by this time next year? Who knows? Tell us down below there. Obviously, subscribe, turn that alarm bell on so you never miss out on these announcement videos. Without further ado, he's been Nathan, I've been Ben, up the bill with the pride of it. We'll see you later.